everyone, it's Janice from The Reading Train. This story is called The Berenstain Bears Christmas Tree by Stan and Jan Berenstain. In bear country, Christmas excitement was mounting. The waiting was down to ten hours and counting. The holly was hung, the presents were bought, a magnificent Christmas salmon was caught. And now it was time for the most fun of all, getting the tree. A tree full and fat, straight, green, and tall, with oodles of needles and crannies and nooks for the bears to hang their tree things by hooks. The tree things, cried Pop, with the jolliest shout, our wonderful tree things! Let's get them out! They had quite a collection. There were bangles and bells and bright colored balls. Boxes of things in closets and cupboards and corners of halls. There were some that were bear looms saved year after year. A Santa bear sled with tiny reindeer. Strings of bright beads to hang in festoons, a musical bear that sang Christmassy tunes. Tis the season to be furry, especially if you're a bear. But the bear's finest tree thing, their finest by far, was a thing for the top, their Christmas tree star. It had eighteen points and was so glittery bright that the stars of the heavens seemed dim in its light. What an array! What a display! Papa Bear bragged, quite carried away. What a grand and glorious sight it will be when we hang all this stuff on our Christmas tree. Why, bears will come from near and far to see how Christmassy we are. So all the bears needed now, don't you see? All that they needed now was the tree! A tree straight and tall, fine, full, and fat. Come, cubs, said Papa, as he put on his hat. Now be sure to dress warmly, said wise Mama Bear. There's more than a hint of snow in the air. And oh yes, by our tree down the road, from Grizzly Gus, I am sure he will have the right tree for us. Snow, said Papa, sniffing the air. Not a chance. The weather today will be bright and fair. I always can tell if it's going to snow by a sharp shooting pain in my left big toe. As for Gus and those trees lying in stacks, not for us, Papa said as he took up his axe. But Papa, said Brother, I don't mean to fuss, but Mom said to buy one from Grizzly Gus. One of those, snorted Pa. Fresh cut indeed. They look more like some overgrown evergreen weed. Now brother and sister usually did what Mom said, but not Papa. He did whatever came into his head. And a fine fat tree is what came into his head that particular Christmas. No matter what, no matter where, if it means going down to the Panama Isthmus, if it means climbing up to the top of Pike's Peak, I will find it, he said, if it takes us a week. But Christmas, said Sis, is just hours away. We must find our Christmas tree today. But Pop didn't hear. By now he was really quite carried away. He was forgetting something that day, that Christmas is more than show and display. More than just tinsel and pink plastic stars and stuffing yourself with sugar nut bars. There was something important that he was forgetting. Christmas is forgiving. It isn't forgetting. This was a time to be thinking of others. Mama's, Papa's, sister's, brother's. A time to think of each neighbor and friend. But all that was forgotten as they rounded a bend. 
As they rounded that bend, what did they see? Papa's perfect Christmas tree. What a tree! What a tree! This surely was. Its green was so green. Its tall didn't quit. Its nooks all had crannies. Its crannies had nooks. The one question was, would they have enough hooks? Stand back, said Papa, getting ready to chop. Wait, Sister cried. Hold it, please stop. On the timely advice of small Sister Bear, Pa managed to stop his axe in midair. And a good thing, too, for that Christmas tree's trunk just happened to be the home of a skunk. And some squirrels and a grouse and one small chipmunk also resided in that Christmas tree's trunk. Plus 26 crows who were renting upstairs and not one of them happy to see those three bears. Though this tree, said Pa, seemed to find, it isn't quite... What I had in mind! We will find the right tree. We must and we will. I will ford any stream, climb any hill, go over Niagara Falls on a log. Penetrate the impenetrable fog, brave the terrors of sinister bog. We will find the Christmas tree we seek. We will find it, said he, if it takes us a week. But please, said sister, we must find a tree soon. She's right, dad, said brother, it's late afternoon. A tree, cried papa. Fine, full, and fat, straight, green, and tall. And at that very moment, the snow Mom predicted started to fall. Remember, said Dad, a Christmas tree is something we cannot do without, because a tree like that one straight ahead is what Christmas is about. Then, without so much as a passing thought, about whether he should or whether he ought, he raised his axe and got ready to chop. Stand back, he said, reckoning where the tree would drop. It was quite a fine tree, sedate and tall, graceful and regal. It was also, it happened, the home of an eagle and a hawk and a wolf, and a great snowy owl. The eagle took off while the hawk and the wolf and the great snowy owl set up a terrible, terrible howl. The noise seemed to come from every direction. Then, Mr. Eagle expressed his objection. No, that tree back there wasn't quite it. Its green was too green and it leaned a bit. It wasn't quite what I had in mind. Come, we still have a tree to find. Completely ignoring Papa's big toe, the snow had become a really big snow. A snow of snows, a blizzard of blizzards. Why, there was snow on the ground up to their gizzards. Up the mountain, follow me. I'll find one soon. You'll see, you'll see. I certainly hope so, said sister, quite worried. That's right, added brother. In a snow like this, a bear could get buried. But Papa pressed on with just one thing in mind, that perfect tree he was going to find. Full and fat, he cried. Tall and green, the finest tree you've ever seen. Now that is the kind of tree I mean. Hurry, said sister, chop it down. Yes, said brother, 
We still have time to get back to town. But Pop was silent as he looked at that tree. Strangely silent. What did he see? What Papa saw through the driving snow was a tiny window within a glow. Pop hardly breathed. He spoke not a word. What he saw through the window was a tiny snowbird, busily trimming his Christmas tree with the help of the members of his family. Their tree was a twig decorated with seeds that the tiny snowbirds had collected from weeds. And for the first time that day, Papa saw Christmas in a different way. Maybe it was the tiny twig tree, or maybe the seeds that helped Papa see the other guy's needs. But whatever it was, Pa shouldered his axe and spared the tree. He remembered what Christmas is really about. He'd had it all backward and inside out. This, said Pop, with a far off Christmassy look in his eye, is a time to think of the other guy. A time, he continued, to be thinking of others. Mamas, papas, sisters, brothers, nature's creatures, great and small, fellow creatures, one and all. But Papa said, "Sis, what about our tree, the tree for our bells, our bright colored balls?" Yeah, added brother, and all that stuff in our closets and halls. No problem, said Pa. There's no need to fuss. We'll go back and buy one from Grizzly Gus. Grizzly Gus, both cubs said together. After that trip and that climb and this weather, don't bother me with questions," said Pop. Then he found an old stump and started to chop. And quick as a flash, there were three pairs of skis. Here, Papa said, slip into these. So Pop and the cubs put on skis and went back for one of Old Grizzly's trees. But when they got back to the Christmas tree lot, the lot was still there, but the trees were not. Only a sign saying "Sorry, sold out," and some tired old needles lying about. When Sis saw those needles, well, she thought she might cry, but then something wondrous caught her eye. Look! She shouted. Someone has decorated our house, and somebody had the chipmunk, the skunk, the crows, and the grouse, the eagle, the owl, and. All of the others, and quite a few of their sisters and brothers, were returning the kindness Pa showed those snowbirds. The bears, they were speechless; they just had no words. All of the bears, tree things were there: the bangles, the bells, the musical bear, the Christmas tree star, the Santa bear sled. Why everything's shining! Sister suddenly said. Then a very special starry light filled the sky that Christmas Eve night. It didn't come from that pink plastic star. It was the light of the real Christmas star. The true Christmas spirit shone down that night. It filled the whole sky with a lovely light. It charged the cold, clear, bare country air. It filled the heart of every bear, and their fellow creatures, one and all, nature's creatures, great and small. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to click on subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single upcoming video.